I wanted you to know at the end of this video, we will also be addressing the statements that they released uh, today. The rest of this video, when I'm not wearing this shirt, was recorded yesterday. So that's like the first half of my thoughts. And then we'll get, I promise you, we're going to get to the other stuff. See, I've had some complaints recently. Complaints that the blue lights we've been using in the background for this channel, they, they aren't good enough. They want the old green ones. Well, considering the fact that two-thirds of my light strips are broken and we're moving in a couple of weeks, that's probably not going to happen. But I wanted to give you another option. Lightless. Completely lightless, except for these two incredibly bright lights in front of me that do their best to make me look tolerable on the internet so i appreciate both of those lights but everything behind me is gone no sumptuous blue hue behind me to illuminate me to backlight me to really show off my figure it's gone so let me know if you like this or if you like the blue better because those are the only two options we have until i move in the next couple of weeks so that's just something you're gonna have to get used to there's also something that is being force fed to a bunch of clubs right now that they're gonna have to get used to now i'm aware what we're gonna talk about today is near and dear to the heart of a lot of people that watch this channel so i am going to make sure that i try and get everything right and try and understand all perspectives on it before forming my opinion not that I don't normally do that, but I don't normally do that. I usually just turn on the camera and just talk about whatever I want to talk about. Whatever happens to be interesting, whatever's going down in the world of football or soccer, etc., I'm there. And my opinions are at best about 75% cooked. This isn't a barbecue. We're not, toy we're, we're not taking 12 hours to cook all this up. But with this, I did at least engage in a copious amount of light reading. We're talking about the FA Cup today. And I did roast... MLS for pulling MLS clubs out of the U.S. Open Cup. And now we're not having the same thing happen in England, right? The Premier League is not pulling its clubs out of the FA Cup. But what it is doing is renegotiating its deal with the English FA. And this requires an understanding that a lot of people particularly me up until a few years ago, didn't necessarily have, and that is that the Premier League is a different entity than the FA, than the English Football League. It is separate. It makes deals to agree to work with those entities, but the Premier League is its own thing. It, it has its own procedures. It's, you know, it's separate. It has its own FFP. It's separate FFP from the English Football League that is below it. So part of a renegotiation uh, between the FA and the Premier League is in keeping the Premier League involved in the FA Cup. Uh, and the way that's worked is they've reached an agreement to strengthen the FA Cup format and increase support for grassroots football. That was tweeted out at 6 a.m. on the 18th. And you'll be watching this on the 19th, so basically a day ago. And this tweet lays out the few things that are being changed in the FA Cup based off of renewed, like, renewed negotiations between the FA and the Prem. The first change being all rounds the Emirates FA Cup will now be played on weekends. They're burying the lead here. Of course, they're burying the lead. They're burying the one thing that a bunch of clubs are getting upset about. Uh, not all the clubs are upset about all rounds of the FA Cup being played on weekends. Uh, the fourth and fifth round and quarterfinals will all be exclusive of the Premier League fixtures for the first time. That is actually kind of a positive change. That basically just means that when FA Cup matches are being played, there will not be Premier League matches on the same day. So you can really focus on the FA Cup fixtures. That's a cool way to do things. The competition will be played without replays in the first round onwards. Now, this is buried like in between stuff. And I'm kind of surprised marketing wise that the Emirates FA Cup Twitter account didn't also put the Premier League will provide up to an additional 33 million pounds for grassroots football on top of the 100 million it is currently giving towards good causes each season. So that's the, your trickle down sort of stuff. But this, this is what lower clubs have an issue with, or at least that's what I initially thought lower clubs have an issue with the idea that replays will no longer happen from the first round onwards. So if you didn't know in the FA Cup, it used to be the entire FA Cup. If you drew, you would just replay the match at the other team's stadium now fairly recently it's been from the fifth round onwards which is once we're down to the last 16 teams there are no replays so extra time penalties on tap from the round of 16 onwards but this is going back from the fifth round to the first round the first round is when league two and league one teams enter the competition this is not a premier league and championship teams don't even enter until the third round so this is going two rounds before premier league teams even start and they're already they're getting rid of the idea of replays, which to me on the surface, when I saw that for the first time, I went, that makes a lot of sense. Replays are a holdover from a bygone era, right? There's already a ton of fixture congestion. English lower leagues are famous for ridiculous amounts of fixture congestion, especially when you consider matches are often suspended or abandoned because the field conditions aren't right. And you're adding in more matches on top of that. But the digger you deep, the digger you deep. The deeper you dig into this whole thing, 
the replay matches are actually very important for the economics of a lot of these lower league clubs because they provide another opportunity to play an FA Cup match. And the FA Cup is a serious economic driver because of the way it distributes money throughout the football league. But I still don't think that the replays are really the main reason that everybody is upset, but people are upset. First, we'll start with my good friend Ellis. He said the FA Cup's a footballing institution with that, which has over 700 clubs taking part in it every year, and yet 20 participants of it, of it have decided for everyone. The 20 clubs who it means the least to. Harsh, but definitely fair a complete disgrace and another sad example of football losing everything that made it great this is what i think is the biggest issue that all of the other clubs involved in the efl and the national league and so on and so forth all the other clubs that are members of the english fa the the, the issue they're going to have with this is that this was all decided based off a negotiation between the fa and the premier league the 20 biggest clubs in england while as ellis points out there are over 700 clubs that take part in the fa cup every year to whom these replays are potentially very important but to whom the FA Cup is more integral to their operation as a club than it is to any one of the Premier League clubs. And that's not to suggest the Premier League clubs don't want to win it. In fact, Premier League clubs basically always win the FA Cup, and it counts as an absolutely major trophy, a major scalp for any manager, any club, any player. But financially, and in terms of the importance on the calendar, it doesn't occupy the same place as, let's say, a team in the English seventh tier that happens to get to the opening round of the FA Cup. You know, FA Cup proper, they're playing League Two and League One teams. Well, the FA Cup is, I mean, it's their Super Bowl, right? To borrow an American phrase, this is the biggest event that they're going to be playing in all year. The seventh division of England is not glamorous. It does not offer opportunities to make money. But if you happen to play an away match against Wrexham and you take half the ticket proceeds from that, that can fund your club for a long time, depending on what level you're at. These types of FA Cup runs, if you, even if you've ever managed a lower league uh, team in football manager, you know these FA Cup runs can fund clubs for years, particularly if you get to the third round and play against a big championship or Premier League club, it is an opportunity of a lifetime. Lincoln City, I remember when they were in the fifth tier, they got to play a Premier League team that funded the club. I can't even imagine how much. And Lincoln City has then blasted its way into the English Football League and is kind of on the rise. I think they're in League One now. But the point is the FA Cup is super important for all of these other clubs, but they had absolutely no say in any of these changes, which is understandably a little jarring when you're any of these clubs that this sort of thing can just happen. You're kind of realizing that negotiations between the Premier League and the FA can just completely alter your world overnight without you having a say in it. It's a dangerous precedent also because you you then start to project out, well, what other changes could the, could the Premier League be making in tandem with the FA that's going to wreak even more havoc on what we're doing in the FA Cup? I do find it strange, considering this was a Premier League negotiation, that the FA Cup, when uh, the, the replays were removed all the way back to the first round, you figure if it was the Premier League doing this negotiation, they just only care about getting it to the third round, because that's when every Premier League team joins the competition. That part makes basically no sense to me. I don't understand why they would go all the way back to the first round, because to be honest, the first and the second round of the FA Cup, or the really small clubs where the FA Cup is absolutely everything, they're going to be involved and then get smacked by a team in League One eventually, but they're going to get a huge paycheck for doing that, and they're going to make memories for their club, for their fans, for the players and coaches themselves that are going to last a lifetime. You know, that super special thing about the FA Cup. It's much less likely that you get a club that makes it all the way to the third round proper for whom those types of events are super financially beneficial. I read the entirety of the FA Cup statement. It is kind of funny how much they try and hide the replay, but I also don't I don't know if they understood how big of a deal it would be to remove replays all the way back to the first week. It's literally just one paragraph when they're going over everything. It's this paragraph right here. They don't mention replays any other time in this very long discussion about you talking about where the money is going to go and how the Premier League and it, the extra funding it's providing for grassroots football and how much it's giving to women's football and all that sort of stuff. So this is definitely a well-written kind of PR piece by the FA trying to express all of the good things that are coming out of this. But essentially what happened is the Premier League and the FA, they just had a negotiation. The FA wanted to try and appease the Premier League while also making it and creating enough of a sellable point that the Premier League was invested in the English football pyramid and everybody involved in these negotiations, I have been trained into being a terrible pessimist when it comes to this, is just out for their own best interest. The FA is imbued with the power of the, being the defender of the English game and they lose that power if they don't maintain that so they have to at least get some marketable stuff like basically charging the Premier League 33 million pounds to get rid of replay uh, and also 
working with the Premier League to schedule FA Cup fixtures on basically empty weekends, which I would assume allows Premier League clubs to more easily focus on one competition than the other. It also probably keeps the Premier League from having as much of an issue with matches in hand and so on and so forth. The Premier League also expressed concern, and it is detailed at length in this statement from the FA, that the increasing burden of English matches, or sorry, of continental matches, is, is very present in this decision and trying to get rid of replays and create individual weekends because the, the English leagues are going to be sending seven or eight teams to Europe every year, and each one of those European competitions is about to have two more matches in its leagues. It's not a group stage anymore. It's a league stage, by the way. Hate to break that news if you haven't figured that out already. But it'll be a league stage with eight matches instead of a group stage with six. So that's already two more matches on the calendar. And I think the Premier League is basically paying 33 million pounds to try and balance that out. But understandably, articles like this popped up right away. This is what was really getting my attention. FA Cup replay changes a total lack of respect for the football pyramid. And I think that quote, and there's a bunch of quotes from a bunch of various disgruntled presidents of clubs down here that quote really just captures the fact that they they would have wanted to be consulted they wanted an explanation they want a seat at the table because all of these other clubs whether it be the efl or the national league on down they want to feel like they at least have a voting voice and in speaking from historical experience if you don't feel like you have a voting voice people can start throwing teas and harbors and it things can get really awkward after that and i would hate to see that happen to britain because they all love tea the BBC does detail that this is part of a new six-year agreement between the FA and the Premier League. So six years from now, we will be revisiting this as there will be a renegotiation where the Premier League gives a little more to get a little more of what it wants. And that's just basically how this relationship seemingly is going to work. In my opinion, the best summarization of this whole thing comes from Peterborough chairman uh, McEnthony. Uh, he said that he has no idea what the Premier League or the FA is even thinking pulling this move. He said, we're now at a stage where the big boys don't even bother to notify us. Uh, talk through proper changes. If this is a sign of things to come, then expect a full-on fallout within English football coming soon, all caused by one faction of our game. Also called it not healthy for our industry. I'll agree with him on that. I think it's dirty. I think if you are the Premier League and you pride yourself on having the most balanced Comp, you know, competitive top league out there, right? That's the biggest thing that the Premier League is trumpeting. And the Premier League has also tripped and fallen into a pile of money over the last couple of years with all these new TV deals it's been able to sign, making it by far the most profitable league out of the top five leagues overall, especially per team with a 1.6 to 1 uh, payout that the Premier League exercises. You make a ton of money from just existing in the Premier League. I mean, it's like over it's like 150 million or something. 150 million, in case I wasn't clear enough on that. So... I, I think that it is in the Premier League's long-term interest to invest in a healthy EFL. And more importantly, it's in the Premier League's interest to not piss the EFL off. I'm not talking about babying their feelings, but also not making a change to the FA Cup, like a pretty large sweeping change to the FA Cup without can you, without even consulting all of these other clubs. You want this to be harmonious. You want people to not think about the fact that the Premier League is a separate entity that is renegotiating everything with the FA Cup. You want to throw enough bones to the EFL so that it is developing good enough clubs that can come in and create great stories for the Premier League, basically. I feel like it's in their vested interest. That's why I feel like this is a dirty move. I feel like it's a bit of a short-sighted move by the Premier League here. doesn't make a lot of sense, but I also don't think the replays thing is the main part of the problem. I think it's the not consulting the entire ladder because the replay thing, you know, from the for it's basically four rounds that are not going to have a replay. That's going to affect a couple clubs every year that would have gotten another pretty serious paycheck, and it's going to suck eggs for those couple of clubs. But, you know, the fact that nobody was consulted outside the Premier League affects all of those clubs. That is a serious problem uh, that I wouldn't be surprised if English fans started to get really up at arms about. Because that's the other thing you got to consider here if you're the Premier League. You don't want to become Premier League against the rest of the English football pyramid when it comes to fandom and banners and the types of protests that have already been laid out by the Bundesliga when they were protesting foreign investment. The fans were coming up with all sorts of ways to kind of protest that and the Premier League definitely is going to want to avoid a situation like that. And anytime you're touching the FA Cup, you got to do it with kid gloves, right? Because this is, even even though it might have lost some of its importance, it is still the historic, the, you know, the historic tournament, basically. Out of every historic tournament, uh, it is the one 
and you every time you touch it and change something, there's going to be a bunch of people that are upset by that. So you need to counterbalance it with probably more than 33 million pounds per year because that's less than what Bournemouth is trying to spend in an average transfer window. As a league, you could probably spare a little bit more than that, or at least you know create some sort of dividend go down to each. Like, or I I don't know. If you want to get rid of replays from the third round, I think that's fair. Right, there's a ton of matches on the docket for the Premier League, and I always thought replays were outdated. Getting rid of replays down to the first round makes no sense, and the Premier League's got a ton of money. I always think it should be passing a bit more down to EFL and National League to try and keep that incredibly healthy and uniquely awesome English league structure, like down to the sixth and seventh tier, intact without quite as many clubs being so strapped for cash. Just a weird situation. Don't really understand why they would do it this way, and that's basically what McAnthony was echoing. Like, no idea why the Premier League of the FA would even think of of pulling this move. They probably didn't think it was going to have the light shined on it as much as it is, but like a lot of these football presidents, they they don't need much of an invitation to bash on the Premier League for not sharing enough of their money. And the FA and the Premier League have, have given them a proper excuse to do just that. So tough spot. So the statements I mentioned at the beginning, the first one's from the FA Cup. They clearly did not expect this kind of backlash. And when you read their statement with no other context, you come away going, Oh, this is being blown way out of proportion. Because with their statement, it, they don't walk back on anything. They don't say like, "Oh, we're gonna you know reinstate replays or whatever." <coughs> but what they do point out, sorry, I've been eating a lot of peanuts, a lot of salt in the uh, esophagus. You know what I'm saying? Sounds like some sort of Eminem rap. Anyways, uh, they they do mention that it went through like the, the they say right the FA says that this went through two rounds of approval that had representation from the EFL, from the English Football League in it, as well as one layer of approval that has like National League and even grassroots, you know, representatives within it. So the, the, the first thing that they mention is that this went through, this was approved by the Professional Game Board, which consists of four EFL representatives and four Premier League representatives last month. Uh, and then they also talk about how it was uh, then approved by the FA board, which includes representatives from all those things I was talking about. So they do show some surprise and kind of remorse for the fact that this has been blown out of proportion. But when I read this initially, I felt like this was the FA saying, you know, uh, in the nicest possible terms, you guys are blowing this way out of proportion. We had this vote multiple times with your representatives. And if you feel like your representatives aren't, you know, aligning with your views, then we'd love to talk about that. But, you know, we passed it through two different groups that have your representatives involved. This isn't just a negotiation between the FA and the Premier League. It went through these other things. And it just seems, it seemed when I read this pretty cut and dry, but then EFL communications, which is apparently like the EFL Twitter account itself has to have a separate Twitter account to like make statements or whatever. They tweeted it out and it's instead of being on Twitter, they've linked their website here. This is like their response statement. And it basically turns this whole thing into a he said, she said situation, right? Like, I don't know what the professional game board is supposed to be doing, right? I didn't know what it was until yesterday, right? Like, it is new to me the, what, the, the concept of the PGB in the first place. So when, they, when EFL comes out and goes, a separate issue, the role of the EFL representatives and the professional game board is agreeing... Uh, in agreeing to the fixture calendar, uh, calendar, they say that the PGB, the professional game board, is there to make technical decisions across the game as opposed to key policy decisions such as competition changes or formats. I don't know if that's true, right? The FA made it sound like this is some sort of board, like the professional game board sounds like something that would be dealing with professional football, whatever, made it sound like this board was something that is supposed to be handling the FA Cup. If the EFL is saying it's not supposed to be handling the FA Cup, then why was it handling the FA Cup? Because two paragraphs later, they acknowledge... Uh, the, you know, the, well, basically in the next two paragraphs, they acknowledge that they the, their EFL representatives were involved in this process, uh, but that they got hoodwinked and bamboozled and that they were misled. They say in the final sentence, though, in a direct he, sh like he said, she said, uh, it's important to note that this matter was not discussed by the FA Cup Committee, a separate group that oversees the competition across the professional and national game. So the, 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 the FA board, I'm assuming, is different than the FA Cup committee. The FA statement doesn't mention something called the FA Cup committee. It says it went through the FA board. This statement, if, as long as the FA Cup committee is something different, doesn't mention the FA board. It just talks about how the EFL uh, is taken aback by this decision, feels like it wasn't involved in this decision uh, but th this whole part down here does interest me. Any decisions taken on the calendar involving EFL representatives are in no way an endorsement of a joint 
Uh, they refer to it many times as the joint deal agreed between the FA and the Premier League, which is what I thought it was, obviously, yesterday. But then after reading the FA statement, it sounds like that at least in name, the FA and the Premier League tried to push this through various committees that EFL is, uh, you know, that the EFL is involved with. So the fact that, you know, the, the, they're, they're, this is almost a contradiction here. I'm not saying the EFL is in the wrong. I still feel like EFL is underrepresented in this process, right, especially when it comes to these sorts of decisions. Uh, but to, to suggest that they weren't, like, any decision taken on the calendar involving EFL representatives are in no way an endorsement of the joint. Like, if EFL representatives were involved in the process, right, like they're saying that they were involved in the process, you know, you know, it's like an elective government, right? You're not, you're not going to hold a mass vote between every club in English football for every single change, right? You elect people to be your representatives. You agree on a system in order to imp like approve this stuff. And it sounds like the EFL is still saying that, hey, there's this whole FA Cup committee that wasn't even addressed. But then again, I don't understand how any of this works. I don't know if it's supposed to go through the F FA Cup committee. They're saying that what the the FA is saying is like a very valid committee for this to go through. The EFL is just saying it's not a valid committee for it to go through. That's direct like I don't know who's right. Like I'm not I'm not somebody that was involved in the decision making process of this 15 years ago, right? They're just directly contradicting each other at this point. But the fact that their representatives were involved when everybody was making it sound like the representatives weren't involved at all in their response to this does make me feel a little weird about it. I'm, you're never going to catch me siding with the Premier League in a money grab here, but I'm just saying, right? As part of the discussion, the EFL representatives, so like they're saying that they were part of the discussion here. As part of the discussions, the EFL representatives did challenge the position and were told that clubs would be comfortable with no replays. I, I mean, like, if you're the EFL representatives, who are you picking as the EFL representatives? Are these guys industry plants? Like, you, how can they just be told that clubs will be comfortable with no replays when clubs are clearly not comfortable with no replays, right? Like, why are they even the EFL representatives if they're just like, oh, okay, like Homer Simpson over here, like, oh, yeah, that sounds like a good, you know, oh, okay, yeah, maybe they will be comfortable with it. And then they say they were effectively advised that as a result of it being an FA competition, the fixture list needed to be agreed as presented. It, it, it Honestly, these two sentences right here just make it sound like the EFL representatives are completely incompetent. Like whoever these people were got bullied, right? They got completely outplayed. They got outmaneuvered. I mean, you've got them over here just agreeing, like, like, like they challenged the position and then were just told. Like, they weren't made to do it. They, they, they just went, oh, you know, I think that, like, we're, we're just reenacting the argument here that they lost. They were effectively advised. They, this, this doesn't say, like, forced. They weren't, you know, they weren't compelled against their will. They were advised. They were told that as a result of it being an FA competition, the fixture list needed to be agreed as presented. The, the way this is written suggests that that is not true, right? Again, I would have no freaking clue here, right? But... Uh, the way they're writing this is this is not true. So then why did the EFL representatives acquiesce to this? So it, it is not as straight and narrow as I thought that it was and that the EFL was just not consulted about this at all. And that is seriously wrong. They were involved in the process to some extent, even then they will admit that. And I think the best case scenario for the EFL is that their representatives were just incompetent and that they can make their voice heard and then get replays back, at least up until the third round. So those first and second round replays that can be hugely financially important for financially important, not only for you know those uh, teams in League One and League Two, but also the National League, that they can come back and, and things will partially be right with the world. But at the very least, based off the way I'm reading this, y'all got to get some new representatives. What the hell are they doing? Seriously.